Envoy Envoy. <laughs> Yo, what's going on, man? Dude, I, that's been Good the, to be on. Yeah, it's going to be lit, man. I don't think we've ever had a show with you. Uh, no, we haven't. I, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not hopping on too many podcasts, but... <laughs> oh, so this is special. We got a it straight special, star appearance, special. bro. Have you ever done a podcast other than the eavesdrop one? I think you did that recently, too, so... Yeah, I did that, like, honestly, like, middle of last year, I think. And then our our optic ones every week and then you know bryce tacular's podcast yeah i did it or yeah i did that with him and ton i think last year as well or in bo4 mm. that's really it yeah dude they're fun bro you no know? yeah it is it's cool just to talk everything out you know about what's current events what's going on yeah i watched a little bit of the, the eavesdrop one uh and then speaking of bryce i did his podcast recently too i like his podcast what he's doing is, is pretty cool he's doing like uh history lessons because a lot of like pros like how they started and stuff like it isn't documented like their story from the beginning so he's like trying to get it all in one place so if you ever need to learn about a pro you can like just go back and he'll tell you all about their career which is kind of dope dude great idea yeah different concept concept mm. yeah so is it envoy or envoy <laughs> uh <laughs> so like i came <laughs> i came up with the name like from like a french a French like uh, meaning or whatever, because it means like messenger. And like when I was super young and corny, I was like, "All right, well, if I'm beating you, I'm sending you a message." So envoy. <laughs> but I mean, the American way to pronounce it is envoy. Yeah. Super well, cheesy, but that was when French? I was like 14. Nah, but I was taking French when I uh, <laughs> when I came up with the name, and this was I was just going through a random name gener- generator. Oh. And I was like, "Oh, what does this mean?" Searched it up, and I was like, "Oh, I guess kind of cool." Well, dude, a lot of people got like their initial names from the random xbox live name generator like back yeah. in the day you remember that john a lot. you did a lot yeah it was so funny dude some of the names i was like bojangles for a little bit did you have one of those john or no my name was cardinal my i have a little brother named josh so our name was cardinal josh and it just it was generated yeah <laughs> i was like all right whatever yeah. i don't know i didn't know any better yeah Sheesh. everybody wanted to have like a super <laughs> cool like uh initial name i remember back in cod 2 when you're coming up with a name you had to have a cool name if you're trying to like fry people right so everybody had these like super cool like webster dictionary names that nobody knew the definition of <laughs> and now it's like got... with no numbers and stuff and yeah. you're like fearing them in well, the lobby yep. back then the numbers used to look pretty cool though in your name as long as it was in the name not after the name like not like jcap 415 that was like a burger name <laughs> But if the, number, if the numbers were in the name, though, I was like, oh, that drops down looks so sick. Yeah. Yeah, like the threes and the fours or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I see Paul in the chat, and now we have, like, such originality, you know, just Paul X. <laughs> You've been coming up with the detailed <laughs> names, dude. I played an eight series against Paul today, and that dude was beaming, bro. Sheesh. Guy's internet's from, from NASA straight up. You think he's getting picked up soon at, after uh, playing him? I don't know. I mean, I was like... <laughs> I'm retired, bro, and I was still gunning him sometimes. So, <laughs> you might be retired, but your thumb still work. You that know? is true, yeah. bro. I had the new controller. I was beaming. <laughs> Never today, stops. <laughs> Never stops. Well, uh, thank drive. you. Oh, sorry, sorry, John. Thank you guys for all tuning in. I'm going to kick it to a quick message from our sponsor. Uh, we are fueled by XP Sports, guys. So, check it out. What's up, everyone? The Codcast is fueled by XP Sports. XP Sports has created gaming supplements focused on giving you what you want. Their products deliver more than just energy and come in unique formats, including pregame powder, ready to drink cans, and even gummies, guys. I love them. The ready to drink can delivers zero sugar, zero calories, and zero lag. The XP Sports Boost Energy Drink is delicious and can help you get through any long gaming session. The formula in the Boost Energy Drink includes a scientifically studied ingredient that supports mental energy, performance, and improved reaction time. It also provides another ingredient that supports normal, healthy eye function. If you're more of a gummy person, try the gummies. They provide an ingredient that supports mental clarity and another to support normal, healthy eye function as well. We all know how important that can be. Make sure you have these bad boys in your gaming arsenal. I use them every day, guys. I mean, come on, talk about multiple birds with one stone. Take your game to the next level with XP Sports. You can purchase XP Sports on their website, xpsports.com, on amazon.com, or at your local Walmart. 
Use code CODCAST at checkout for a 30% discount. Yeah, that's right. I said 30%. That's xpsports.com. Take your game to the next level. Welcome back, guys. <laughs> How's everyone doing, dude? Dude, I have you guys know I worked really hard on that, man. And I hope Keep everybody likes it. Gummies. I got them right here, dude. They're fantastic. <laughs> you guys want to check them out? Podcast that check out for 30% off. But the man of the hour, dude, or, you know, maybe hour and a half, too. <laughs> we got you committed here for a bit. Dylan, dude, thank <laughs> you. you for, thank you for coming on, man. It's been wild for you, dude, the last couple of years. You kind of just, you know, instantly was just a beast and your life has just completely changed, dude. How's it been? Like just a lifestyle change from not being a pro to obviously making a ton more money, being in the, the spotlight, having a ton of viewers and a lot of fans. Completely different, to be honest. I mean, I like the, like looking back, I'd say my come up was probably super crazy out of like most people's just over like the whole Black Ops or World War II to Black Ops 4. Like I got top 80 and then the next year I was like in the league and the year before, like before that I was banned and stuff for keyboarding. So I'd like to think the only person that had a quicker come up was probably simp when the guy just rolled in, got like, what do you get second? And then yeah. he won two events after that. So, I mean, it definitely has been crazy. Um, super fortunate though, to yeah. land where I'm at. And uh, yeah, just uh, trying to s stick around for the grind and, do the best I can be in all my uh, categories. When you were on that come up, when you came from like from being banned, I guess, and then getting top 80, what made you decide to stick with it? Like, how did you get to this point? So like after World War II, it was kind of like, uh, like it hit me like, wow, like I can't just, like I have to put in way more time and like this isn't going to be as easy as it probably used to be. Like in AW, I was 14. That was my first competitive game. I got six at the end of the year, which is, Nothing to be super proud of, but it was my highest play placement at the time, so I was proud of it. And after I got top 80, I was like, well, I know I have the potential, like, maybe this isn't the best team for me, but I can get back to, you know, like, it's one of the best, you know, or, like, in the pro league, so, like, technically one of the best players in the world. Yeah. Um, and that's what just kept pushing me. So it was that I was there before, I can do it again, and I'll figure out a way to make it work. I think the biggest thing that changed from back then to now is... Going through like the whole Black Ops 4, I figured I needed to be like a leader if I wanted to like make my team better, you know, make myself better. Um, Cause like back in the AW, I'd literally flood over and over again online. I was probably going like 50 and 40 on land. I was going like 20 and 50. Mm -hmm. um, and all I know how to do is flood and, you know, call out where people were at. And I learned a lot like over my three years of playing S&D tournaments, keyboarding, how to slow down. Um, <laughs> like, no nah, for real though like <laughs> yeah i literally only use the sub and then i learned how to use an ar um and just like play slower on the map do different things and ultimately i think that's what helps my snd game and just my mental a mental game nowadays was that your plan like the whole time like when you weren't obviously after aw when you got like the taste of it and you kind of like didn't play for like a bit or obviously i couldn't was that like your plan the whole time was like when i'm ready to go I'm going fully in. So like the whole time you were just getting prepared for when you're able to play and get back into that limelight. Or did you have like moments where you're like, I don't really know if I want to do this for my life. Uh, I mean, it definitely felt like a long time. So I had like, I was very questionable about it because it was three years, but I enjoyed playing the S and D tournaments. That's when S and D was popping. So I was making at least decent cash, you know, like $200 a tournament, $300 a tournament. That's when S and D was doing really well. Black ops three, I W ish. And then, I mean, like I said, once I got to World War II and I got top 80, top, top 48 too, it was like, wow, can I actually do this? Or like, is it actually time to give uh -huh. up and go to college, get a job? But uh, my dad pushed me, you know, to do well in gaming, but I also worked a part-time job as like a backup plan almost, mm. you know, like, which I respect. Like if I had a kid doing this, like that's exactly what I tell them to do, you know, mm. work a part-time job until you know, like it's the real deal. And that's what I did. Black Ops 4 came out and I was like, dad, like if any times I can do this, it's going to be now. Give me six months. And if I don't do it, I'll go back to work. And, and four months down the line, we went 6-0 and at the league. And I was absolutely mind blown myself, my team, <laughs> and just our performance. So it's, it's been surreal since still. Yeah, because your team, like nobody really expected it to be like super good. 
and then it was like everybody was pretty nasty but you in particular you just had some moments where it was like whoa this kid is an absolute beast like there were, there, were there times in that team where you're like are we gonna win a championship like you felt like you were gonna win a championship with that gen g team Ah, oh, miami bro don't bring me back <laughs> i have to i didn't get to talk to you oh, yeah, yeah. Then, you know so. but Nah, yeah, I mean, for once Black Ops 4 came out with the whole stim and 5v5, I kind of had a different outlook on the game of just, like, how to play respawn, I guess, and control was brand new, so, um, I don't know, I just grinded a bunch and figured out, like, the most productive things to do in control, hardpoint, yeah. and then brought that throughout my three teams, or, yeah, three teams in Black Ops 4. So what team did you start with in Black Ops 4? I know, we, we know you ended up on, what, Midnight? That's where yeah. you got known. Mm -hmm. But where did you start? So I started with uh, Hollow, Ricky Atura, Dylan Sells, which he still competes in the AM scene, and then Brett Jump. That was my very first team. What a squad, bro. Sheesh, this guy has come up in the world. Come <laughs> up since Black Ops 4, like, so recent, too. Just... That's, not even the, that's not even the thing. There was, so Robbie B, he, like, doesn't play anymore, but his him. team was smoking our too. team. His team was smoking our team, and he teamed with, like, Remedinger, Charles, uh, Godforms, Performal. And my team ended up dropping me and I joined that squad for Robbie B because he just left because he thought like our, my team had more potential, even though they were smoking us. And then we went on to qualify for the pro league qualifier online. Um, or I don't know what it was. Oh, we got the free trip to Vegas. That's what it was. So then uh -huh. we went searching for an org and Midnight picked us up and I represented them for Vegas. We got top 40, losing to E6 and Heretics. Mm. And then we went to Pro League. Or then I got picked up with Brack, Parzillion, and them. Yeah. It's a pretty cool squad, man. You guys are like, well, who are these guys, bro? Wait, so, so actually, right after Vegas, you didn't even you didn't qualify didn't for it. the actual qualifier, right? That's yeah. actually so yeah, nuts to up. think about. It's didn't crazy. qualify for the qualifier and then gets picked up to a spot on a team where, I mean, going in... If you'd asked me, I would have said you guys wouldn't have qualified, right? I yeah. Get, I could never even heard of any. I've heard of you because of AW, but the rest of the team, honestly, and never like, even heard of. Honestly, our group Lama was God too. Yeah, our group was probably the hardest group. Like people didn't think it was the hardest on paper, but after the thing was all said and done, five out of the seven teams in our group qualified, which was the maximum amount of teams. What they was could. your group? It was us, Accelerate, which is like Profusy and them. Yeah, Pittsburgh Knights. Which didn't make it. I was like, was that Haggy's team? That's Haggy's yeah. team. Yeah. Aggie, Joey Nubsy, Joey. them. Yeah, yeah. Um, who else? Overtime, which was the Frenchies. Oh yeah, those guys are not bad either. If yeah, they were they, gross. They were, they were turning gross. up there. Yeah. Um, because <laughs> John, John kept screaming overtime. Getting <laughs> 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 clapped by overtime. And then I forget the last one was, but yeah, yeah dude. there was two more. You're uh. <laughs> Your story is pretty crazy. Yeah, I didn't. I never thought about it that way. Like, who had like the quickest come up or like rise to like the top? You know, one percent of the pro scene. It's been like, yeah, like you and Simp, really. Like, thinking, uh, what are some other people who had like crazy fast come ups? Like, clearly you've done some thinking about it. Is there is there anybody else even uh -huh. like close? Like how fast both of you guys rose to the top? I guess formal. Probably formal in like somebody said yeah, formal. formal, but he was Shotzi, a little organic a because Shotzi, yeah, yeah Shotzi's Shotzi. right there. Yep, Shotzi. I mean, you got to say Illy too. Yeah. Like, I guess all those but, guys, but they've been playing for so long, it yeah. just doesn't resonate the same. I guess. Yeah, they got picked, but I mean, I mean, even me count. too. People forget I've been playing since like AW. Ghost. I guess I looked at you like you took a huge break though. Like I don't know. Yeah. Uh, those Multiple guys, yeah, those guys later. were chilling too. Yeah, it, it was like four, four or five people. Crazy man. Yeah. It's a good list to be on. Let's put it that way. Yeah, for sure. It's a really good list to be on. So what was the first, in terms of lifestyle, so you came from being like an amateur player to being in the upper echelon of pros. What was the first stupid purchase you made? Or well, not stupid, but in your head, you're like, all right, I'm just going to do this because <laughs> life's going good. I don't, I don't really make a lot of dumb purchases, to be honest. Good. It's good. I don't. Are I mean, you like I bought my car, Jr., bro? which was a lot. I mean, I, I'm trying to stack it, bro. Like, I, I'm thinking about... <laughs> I'm thinking about buying a house next year. That's what like, I'm doing right, right now, now, dude. It's fun. Yeah. Right now, I pay a ridiculous amount for my like rent where I could mm, literally same. pay a mortgage. So it just doesn't make any sense. Um, and then, yeah, I got my car, which ran me a pretty nice check. Beautiful whip, though. <laughs> yeah, it is beautiful. I love hey, what'd it. What'd you get? Got a Porsche, uh, 2018 bro. Porsche Macan S. Woo. 
nice. What's the interior? Is it nice. red, bro? All red. Oh, red and black. fire, bro. That was that was my condition. Yeah, I went to the dealership. I said it has to be red interior. Yeah, and they had one used. So it's a nice, it. a nice car, and also it's not like a, it's like a nice ride. You know, like it's not like uncomfortable not for people flat. to for people to hop it's in, like, right? Yeah, I got like the SUV because I feel yeah. like it's just more realistic and it's still very nice though. Not he was flashy. like, I want to flex, but like. I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to flex, flex. Right? I want it to be practical. Yeah. So I'm making classy a pr- flex. So I'm in a classy I mean, but practical Porsche Macan <laughs> with yeah. red all red I mean, interior. My dream car probably is like a Corvette flex. or something. I don't care. Really? Oh, your dream car is yeah. a Corvette? Oh, okay. Corvette, but like I can't get a Corvette as my first car. Like, yeah. why would I do that? It's not. I can't be driving around in a Corvette. Yeah. Like, where do you like drive? Car. Where does Dylan Envoy yeah, drive? Where do you bro? go? Uh, to Chick Fil A. <laughs> Yo, my man bought a Porsche Macan to drive to Chick Fil A. You actually bro. drive to the airport? Uh, well, I mean, if like people are flying in stuff, or <laughs> it depends. But I mean, it's like twenty minutes away. Right, that's that's, I mean, if you got it, you got it, right? Like, and that that car doesn't. I don't tell those folks to Uber in, but I mean, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> also, he I mean... he got a twenty eighteen, so it's like you were ignorant with it. Like you you probably didn't you know spend like a. A crazy amount like if you didn't get it brand new right so yeah it was like half the price would have been brand new so yeah. See? smart man <laughs> only 20k miles See, dude? Genius, bro. <laughs> but uh yeah that, that's dope man i'm happy for you dude especially now like being on optic and that actually leads us into the next um topic going into uh you know in this off season obviously after chicago you guys transitioned over to optic like how does that feel to be finally like well, first, tell me a little bit about like the whole situation, wherever you can tell me. And then how does it feel to be a part of like that optic brand? So, yeah, to start off, I mean, it's crazy being part of the brand, like nothing corny at all. Like everyone watched this brand and like phase while they're growing up. So like it's just nuts to be a part of and like see your name next to like that logo or whatever. Yeah. Um, and we haven't even like played in an event or anything where, you know, it's crazy, like the fans and everything. So super fortunate on that end but i mean this off season was kind of crazy i think i knew like two months in advance before it happened um but hector told me like you know like that 1v1 at champs or whatever could have like changed what happened i mean i think personally like they would have gave it back to him no matter what Mm -hmm. because like it's just it wasn't the same without hector and them owning it um but like that is nuts to think about after the fact that that could have changed something or, you know, if they had done better in the season, we'd be at a completely different point right now where maybe 100 Thieves isn't in the league and we're not optic. So I don't know. I think it worked out well for all parties. I think 100 Thieves yeah. being in the league is super, super beneficial um, for everyone. And I mean, yeah, still just nuts. So in the if I can rewind a little bit in the Modern Warfare offseason, how did you get to the point where those guys hit you up and how did it make you feel like just getting hit up by a team like that? But, I mean, it was uh, Huntsman at the time, but okay. Yeah. So, well, everyone knows like we, me and Alec were supposed to go to that rumored Seattle. Seattle roster. Team. Yeah. Yeah. Which was almost close to going through, but Matt and Seth hit us up last minute and we really wanted to team with Pierce at the time. So we were like, this just makes sense. Well, originally actually they only hit up Alec. Then Alex, like, I got two, I got two bozos I can bring along. So he brought us along <laughs> um, and it worked out. Cause I was like thinking going in the off season, I didn't really know what to do. Um, I got offers from a couple teams, but I wanted to like it more be like a core group of guys. You know, yeah. I didn't just want to jump on a team and after my rookie season, try to build a roster that's like successful. I wanted to try to pair up with someone that's already has success and that could help me and my team be better players and you know people so alec was like the perfect fit for that um and yeah so that's how it really happened it was literally over one weekend we got it done and it was super super like quick yeah Yeah, that sounds less painful than a lot of team and people's uh off seasons and you landed in a crazy spot with like the biggest legends in call of duty history so yeah wow any uh (laughs) i would have been in a good spot i think either way but definitely super super fortunate Speaking of like, you know, the MWCs and stuff, I don't want to spend too much time on it, but you know, I feel like I got to ask, are there any like things you look back on in that season and you're like, if this one thing went differently, this happens for us? Or like, what are like the major regrets or 
things that you'll you'll look back on that season and it just stands out to you so getting reverse swept by florida pride atlanta hurts um especially the way we lost i mean we literally like didn't pick up a long route and that's really what lost us the whole series because we would have closed out the dom that's super specific otherwise generally i think our team playing best of 11s and practicing search regularly helps us so so much mm. um it's been like a key point in this year i mean not too overwhelming because it's the beginning of the season we don't even have a schedule yet mm -hmm. but we've been playing best of 11s we literally have one tomorrow against triumph uh jordan's team so they've been giving us good practice in those mm. um and it helps them too because we have cups but when our essence like we're we're bound to win respawns, even if we're like the worst respawn team in the game, we probably could squeeze out one. Yeah. But at, towards the end of last year, we started clutching up in search. Like everyone started making clutch plays, playing their lives. Um, it just did us really well, like in like matchups. And we had a lot more better vetoes because our map vetoes weren't as good when we weren't practicing as much. So that's one thing I learned last year is that we need regular search practice if we're going to be consistent. So you think that that'll change like for majority of the league this year, like to be grind? Because I know everybody played search last year, but to be like taking it even more serious this year, going into maybe. Practice I stuff, think or? it's I think it's super team to team. I mean, mm. personally, we're not trying to scrim pro teams because like why would we give them the practice if they're yeah. not gonna try to get it themselves? And these challenger players like will actually go hard. Yeah, so, <laughs> but, they're happy to have the opportunity to play you guys. Exactly, <laughs> we're gonna sure. give them good reps. I watched mm -hmm. you guys play uh, Paul X and them earlier, and they were going hard. That Venom guy was kind of frying, bro. He's oh, sweating, dude. dude. <laughs> dude that's the thing about those AMs, like, they're ratty, bro. Like, that's the hardest mm -hmm. play style to beat nowadays. And that Western team is, like, the perfect example of it. Yeah. And they're really good at search, so, like, it's going to be hard to take them down. So, do you feel like, uh, especially, like, so you said that once you guys grinded search, like, you noticed that made your team way better you feel like now in this game that search is a little bit more like controllable because of the map because of the maps and then obviously being like 4v4 you feel like uh putting that you know time in especially with the more controllable search you just feel like you can completely control like the outcome or what uh yeah i think obviously each game's a little different mm -hmm. and i think in like mw if you got like a first blood usually a lot of time you could just bully out of sight in this game i feel like the the maps are definitely a lot different than each other um I don't know how else to put it, but like Moscow, Moscow is huge, right? Three lanes. You probably could, even in 4v4, you probably could run down a lane without getting caught, like the street or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then you have Garrison, which is literally a two lane map. So Flame. you, you got to get like to, a pick on that map, I feel like. Yeah. So you definitely have to use a lot of teamwork and, you know, just trying to get like doubling up on someone to get a kill. That's probably the biggest thing. Like last year is probably easier to do that because you could just stack a site. And if five people are running at you, there's no stopping that. But the maps really aren't set up to, just bully out sites mm. without being like helpless. How do you feel the transition to 44 has like helped the, I guess the lower teams in the league, if you get what I'm saying, like has it strengthened the teams that you've played so far in scrims? Have you seen any oh, extremely yeah. weak teams? You don't say who they are, but like teams that you've probably the were running over in the past. Dude, like, it is, yeah. Has it gotten, has it, is it at a higher level now in your Everyone's opinion? Everyone's gonna hate me for this and like say I'm wrong, but I think 5v5 took way more skill. Maybe it was just running at people but it took an extreme amount of teamwork and not everyone has teamwork. Like I can show you multiple examples in Black Ops 4 and MW where the teams with teamwork just like destroyed the teams that didn't. And I think fours, it's literally just about winning your ones, holding a preamp until you get a kill. And most of the time you'll, it's going to reward you, which I mean, I don't know. It goes both ways. You don't but think, I think that the teamwork part this of is a, five, this but, is an extremely unpopular opinion right here. But there's yeah. the other side of that. Like you don't <laughs> think like having like the individual uh, anticipation and like being able to methodically like you know get two kills, knowing where two people are going to be at, and outplaying both of those guys rather than just like five v five being able to send a body out, you know, as like a wash and playing for a trade. Like you don't think that you know in four v four, it's a little bit you can be a little bit more intelligent and benefit off of that or what? Yeah, I mean, like I said, it goes both ways. Like, I feel like... I disagree with my you there, bro. Nah. <laughs> like, I'm, I don't know. I mean, go ahead. Let him say his piece. I mean, most people are going to disagree with him, so... Yeah. There's a play style for both. I just think playing your lives in the 5v5 COD rewards you so much more than playing your lives in 4s because you can just make people overextend over and over and over and punish them. Now, if you get someone like one shot, you just chow and there's most likely no one to help them. And then you have numbers and you can just bully out. I feel like you, 
Could but you get it more punishing though? though? Yeah, yeah, that's more of a pun. And like the thing I didn't like about Black Ops Four myself, which you were actually really good at, was throwing shoulders and you'd be one shot 147 times before somebody could actually kill you because yeah. you just get hurt and stem up and you'd have teammates everywhere. And nah, like, yeah, I definitely not agree the it's essence dumb. of COD. No, nah, I definitely agree. It's like dumb to a point, but I look at it as like, I mean, if you're play, if you're, I mean, this is what makes like good teams and good players like the good teams and good players. But you can four v five a team. But it's almost impossible sometimes to like 3v4. That's how I look at it. But if you play it well, like you can do it. But I don't know. It's, I don't know. It's such a, I feel like, I I feel like it's the it. opposite though. I feel, honestly feel like it's the opposite. Because like <laughs> when you add another guy, it just gets crazier and crazier. I don't know. Yeah, like I, I, I see people in the chat, like both people, like Temp is one perspective, Looney is the other. So yeah, I guess people are a little bit split on it. I guess for me, I grew up playing 4v4 and, you know, in 5v5, it just felt a little bit hectic. And in 4v4, I just feel like you can get away with more, right? Like you can get a kill, get out, play your life, communicate, form a plan, and then go again, right? Because there's not going to be just like that extra guy. But I definitely yeah. see your your sort of perspective, you know? Would you, so Temp in the chat, for the people who are going to watch on YouTube, says in 4s, you have to be smarter than you do in 5s. But from what you were saying, it sounds like you disagree with that because of the teamwork aspects or what, whatever it may be. I say in fours, you can't throw your life away as much as fives. I'll agree with people in fives. You could just have like a guy going rogue or throwing his life away and still like win a hill or win a hold, which is like dumb in itself. But that also makes the other team use more teamwork to like work for those kills. I definitely think situationally, like there's spots and I mean, like you, you're right in certain situations. Right? Like one guy in this game can completely lock down like a rotation with a Krig. He gets like a two, three piece, right? Catches those guys in 5v5, obviously. You know that's a bit different they overwhelm them and just fry them so i get what you're saying like the teamwork aspect but for the most part i think 4v4 is gonna be better this year and teamwork yeah i think will, it's better for the spectators out. for sure yeah and i don't mind personally i don't mind 4v4 i mean obviously i'm a 5v5 era kid i literally came up in both 5v5 games so <laughs> it's probably a little biased there but i mean my play style works just as well for fours so yeah i know what it is dude he, he wanted to have rcd still so now he doesn't have them, so he's like, damn it, bro. I miss, I miss that. <laughs> How was that, that was though, man? How was that situation? I know you love playing with him, dude. That had to be so uh, tough. Yeah, I mean, he wa I knew that's where he wanted to end up, so, like, nothing was going to stop him from going there. Um, I mean, yeah, but, I mean, he's, it's definitely someone hard to lose, and I think he's a really good leader, so something that we lack, and sometimes I have to, like, step up the plate more. I guess this year mm. and like that aspect and I don't know we're making it work yeah did you guys choose uh Brandon Dashy in the offseason quickly or is that something that you guys because I felt like he was on the team playing Warzone at least with you guys super quick and it was like a no-brainer for the team is that how it went down uh so it was really between him and one other person um but yeah I mean it was like a no-brainer um that it was going to be one of these two. And obviously Bruce has been on the squad before. He's like, I've been with Hector, Seth and them. So we knew what we were going to get out of him. And honestly, I feel like the, what is it? The issues are people that have, the issues that people think he'll have. I think he'll do a better job of um, making sure he isn't that person this year um, because he's seen what it did to him in the past. So Yeah. Yeah. So how's the leadership role going for you on, um, on the squad, man? Cause I, I was watching today and it seems like in uh you know every single map like if people start you know laughing or getting off track like you try to like get everybody back on the track and and focusing up or you know if somebody wants to try something crazy during a game you're sort of calling them out like why would we do that like do you feel like you almost have to be that guy like at all times like be super on point to make sure everybody doesn't like get off track uh sometimes yeah i think we do a good job of like everyone holding themselves accountable but it's just annoying when you know, we start trolling and then we lose the map and we come back after the map like, well, how the fuck do we lose the map? Like, obviously we know how. We just start trolling and, you know, um, the biggest problem with us is ego challenge. Like, I mean, <laughs> anyone could have guessed that, but like, I'm like, dude, if you're stuck in a corner and the guy's going to challenge you, stay in the corner. Don't like jump chal him and like make him not have to overextend. Yeah. Um, but it's stuff we can fix. And yeah, I mean, someone has to call out people for like the little mistakes because those little, I'm a firm believer that Practicing good tendencies and scrims is like gonna make you the most prepared for the match. So if we're not practicing good tendencies, it's like you're gonna ego challenge the match. You're not gonna play your life. 
as good as you should be. Hmm. So, what do you think about this game's map set in general? Like, just from a competitive aspect uh, and control in particular, a lot of people were complaining about it in the past, but some of the issues have been fixed. What do you think about the game so far in its current state? I, I love Treyarch games. I like the gunplay in this game. I mean, people said that at the beginning of MW that the gunplay was great, but sucks the spawns weren't as, <laughs> you know, as good as the gunplay. But the spawns are back, like, back to normal this year, so it's really easy just... Or just flows very nice, I guess. Yeah. Um, there's some maps that are weird, like Crossroads Hardpoint is literally the size of Nuketown. So, sucks, but <laughs> we kind of need five maps in Hardpoint. So, that's the fifth map. Um, but, as for control... Oh, go, oh, ahead. go ahead. I was just going to say, but there's still room to move around on Crossroads a little bit. Just if they move that hill, maybe it'd be... Yeah, back to where it was. Hill's ass. <laughs> Honestly, everyone thought uh, it would be better, but turns out... <laughs> what is that, P4 you guys are talking about? P4? Yeah. yeah, P4. No matter, no yeah, matter where you put the hills, <laughs> no matter what rotation you put the hills in, like there's gonna be two that are right next to each other. So, yeah. even if you try to change up the whole rotation, um, could they not put a hill? Like, could they not put a hill like ice? Or is that just horrible? I that would mean, be crazy, bro. I just, I'm just <laughs> trying like, to think about it. Like, it'd be like Street Hill on Moscow. That's gotta be my like the worst hill in the game. In my oh, that hill is terrible. Yeah, At that's true. Sub, like, dude, it's hard. It is hard, but. Uh, ben, control? Ben said, I really like control. Ben said swap P2 and P4. So actually could be pretty cool. Like kind of like flip flop. So you just go back and forth. Yeah. I mean one yeah, side would be gummy would OP, be bro. Two and three would still be next to each other though. <laughs> yeah, that's true. All right. Anyways, let's go fi <laughs> we'll figure we'll figure that out. But yeah. uh control, what, what what do you think about control? I, I feel like uh checkmate control is a bit weird. Like I don't know. It, it just seems kind of <laughs> Kind of tough uh what are your thoughts on the control maps what do you like what do you just like it is a little more weird in fours than it was in fives but i was the one pushing or i know a lot of people were but i was pushing for control to be a game mode in this game i'm happy they brought it back um i just think it's really it might be a little hard for spectators to watch but how there's like two win conditions um for like offense or yeah just offense is like really cool um i think it makes people play their lives a lot more too so obviously it's it's fun to watch, and it takes a lot of skill, in my opinion, a lot of play in your life, and not just giving people free kills. or super rewarding. Yeah. Have you guys figured out how to win Moscow attacking side of control yet? Well, they uh, got rid of it just today. Got removed today. Yeah. It's oh, got removed today? For Raid, yeah, yep. Thank God. Wait, well, hold on. <laughs> Never leads, mind. That leads me to the next thing. Raid obviously was not built with having control in mind. What do you think about no. Raid control, bro? Oh, uh, way better than Moscow. It's way better than Moscow, yes. What do you, um, like... Offense people has like a, like a good a good shot on the map. Go ahead. Yeah, offense has a good shot, and people, I don't know, people think that you can like. There's people that were against raid control, and they actually wanted Moscow control in wow. because because on raid people were afraid of getting spawn trapped like in garage on a uh, on your offenses. And I was like, at least you can win an offense though. Like yeah. if you play it right, you can win an offense, and like the defense can like fuck up. But on Moscow, there's literally it'll be so boring to watch for the spectators. And, like, if the pros aren't trolling, then you're not losing a defense. You're just not happening. Like, in our scrims, we literally took a full, a full Moscow control map, and on our offense, we just camped and spawned. We said, I'm not giving them any kills. Like, I'm giving myself the best chance to, you know, maybe we go for the B point, but I'm not going for A. Like, we're not going to yeah. get it. Like, I want defense, and that was literally the win condition. <laughs> yeah, it's actually crazy <laughs> as, as things develop, like, how it's going to play out. Because I feel like... I don't know. I was playing checkmate, bro. And I, when teams are set up on defense, they know what they're doing, bro. You just get absolutely railed in your spawn, dude. Like offense can be so hard on the map. Like if you don't get control early in it, I don't know. I think we're going to have some really quick controls this season. Like, I think it's going to yeah, be wild. For sure. I, don't know. I think in this game too, more than that, like maybe more than the last couple of years, like your break means so much. Yeah, if you get a totally. good break in control, like a four down a three down, you could just run up and spawn kill and give yourself a 10 life lead going into the next next round. Because it'll take them a bit <laughs> to get back, right? You just triple stack the point. Like they're just Yeah. It's gonna be it's gonna be pretty interesting to see how, how it all plays out. Um But do you have a favorite like map mode combo in this game right now? When you just feel like you're absolutely frying on? Um I'd probably say like my favorite hard point, honestly, is raid. It just it feels Love nice. It literally that. feels I didn't play like like a few back in the day, but it flows like 
the best it's the best map in the game like hands down like yeah. in control just and all those maps in every and hard point like period it just makes sense feels nice it flows like smoothly you get punished super hard for not rotating and not holding hills well um and i mean that's probably been like our worst map recently if i'm being honest like mm. we get comeback on almost every other game where we have like 240 points and they just get like 80 in a row and we're like dude we're we got to be trolling her but that's that's what happens when you you know mess up a rotation and they string two hills together or we hit scrap time and then they have they're set up for new i just so. like how every hill on raid is like you can lock it down but if you play it right it's also like breakable you know what i mean so like, exactly I, I just think it plays out so nice i wish we had like a couple maps that we had every year like i wish the core movement didn't sway so much from game to game I wish we had like at least like three or four maps that were just every year like raid standoff maybe you know some rendition of like a solar that works for boots i think that'd be dope high rise solar was good but it it just can't work for boots bro <laughs> think I mean, about like the middle of the map no, and glass yeah, yeah and just, no. i know what you're saying though but like just some of the maps that they could just try to bring in every game i just like sure. the way like the you. buildings were set out in the lanes and stuff i just think it'd be cool if they were able to Make a map sort of like it. I love that map, dude. Even though I was ass boots. at it, I loved it. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> I got clapped in that map every time. I think that was the like only Detroit map I enjoyed playing on that game. Wait, Detroit, you said? They yeah. brought back Detroit, Probably right? They brought it back for World War II, did they not? It was, um... Reskinned? Valkyrie? It was, um, Valkyrie, yeah. Yeah. It was sick it was... in Search, bro. That was a sick Search map. Yeah, it was. It really was. Yeah, I mean, I hope they bring back some of these throwback maps in the future. Or just have it set to, like, bring back these same ones every year, because... I just don't think we'll get like a solid five competitive maps every single year that are good. And yeah. like everyone says, the maps dictate 90% of how competitive is played or how it's like doable. Well, I was a bit worried like when I heard like Raid was coming back because obviously like movement and guns and stuff change how a map is played, but like pretty happy with how it plays out right now. It feels like it feels the same, bro. Like it ain't pretty really... much the same, yeah. The only thing it different on Raid is faster. you can swim now, cool, yeah. you know? <laughs> the swimming and obviously like sliding and mantling is faster than it was in the past well, like so i guess in the first ring hill you can climb on the top and use the the whatever the top thing in the middle is you can oh, use yeah. that for cover could a lot quicker than you could in the you past did you not jump but... up and, bo and bops too on it it just took time you know like jump up on the rock and then jump on the head and, yeah. the... Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> now you, you just jump up there the, you can cap the hill up there too which you couldn't do beforehand oh yeah yeah that makes a big difference but like the natural like the way you play certain situations hasn't changed at least in when I play it, just be like you still, I just remember, like, oh yeah, this is what you do in this spot. It works out, which just like feels so nice. I, I want to stand off. I think standoff would be the, the dopest map to watch competitively. Search and destroy. Hard point, dude, is just perfect, bro. If, if you had wow. one map to bring back, what would you guys bring back, both of y'all? Uh, hmm. For, are, we, are we talking specifically for this game? Yeah, and specifically it's a for this game. Probably, I mean, I guess I think standoff is a pretty good one. I think it would work for yeah. control and hard point. The flow of it, there's not too many things that you could break with. I'm trying to think about mantling and stuff and the sliding. I think it'd be pretty good. Pretty solid yeah, map. Might be solid, yeah. But, I don't know how control. Where did you put the control points? You think on standoff? Uh, one like <sighs> one where like P4 what? is like one would have to go where the search and destroy bomb is by like. Uh, What's that? Like by, by defense? By, no, no, yeah, not, not. I don't think you could put a hey. It'd be like way too OP, right? So it'd have to be like one by like the the B bomb. I think outside of yellow, like maybe like yeah, that, like uh, where all those boxes are. Yeah, and maybe yeah. extending like, what? Well, I guess it couldn't be in courtyard at all because or, or inside the house. I don't know. I feel like it'd be kind Whoa. of OP once you get outside. Yo, yeah, once you get control points have to be somewhat like open, right, to attack. Yeah. It would have to be like first hard point and then right in front of the tank in front of hay, like entering towards the bomb site. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah like on the statue and tank. Even those are right first next hard to point each other. kind of small though. Aren't the control points in this game kind of like wide? Wait, no, I got it. Like, I got it actually. It would have to yeah, be somewhere. back alley by the hop wall, one of them, and then the other one would have to be in front of the tank in in front of hay. You get what I'm saying? It's like it's like ones all the way like back alley. So they have to come all the way from like their barn to back alley to cap the point. And you also can fight from your building. It's relatively close. And the other one's in front of the tank. I think that yeah, that'd probably out. be best. Work out. That makes sense. 
Oh, dude. Looney in the chat says one gas. Nice. Gas? Yeah, I guess. That's, that part. That portion of the map was so, what, underutilized? Gas would be OP, though, because you could just jump up on the big red dumpster and then just pre-aim the cross to the alley, like, on offense. But it'd have to be, like, in the alley. Otherwise, it wouldn't work. Because you should be able to, like, go mid-street and hop the wall. And, like, like, half out. inside, half outside? Yeah, you know? Like, I don't think work. it should cut that corner. Otherwise, defense mm. would just be trash. Express is a good one. Not for hard point, but for search and destroy and control would be really good. Yeah. Um, there's, anyways, some, there's some really good maps in the past that they can bring back for sure. Anyways, anyways. let's talk a little bit about like uh, your competition. Uh, do you have like a team you think is going to be your, your biggest like rival this year or a team that you're just specifically excited to play against? Um, not necessarily. I mean, probably FaZe, if anyone, because Alex there and obviously we lost to them at Champs last year twice. So it'd be nice to get some revenge on them at some point this season. Hopefully we don't put, like end up having to wait all year basically to play them. Hopefully the schedule works out. <laughs> well, you know, so we get some good practice against them. They announced like how it's it's like uh you know week 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 and then major so and I think every team will be there so I don't think you have to wait super long as long as you guys both are really good and make it to a final. You yeah, can, you'll, be, exactly. you'll be all right. So, but besides you know. I mean besides them, I think Hunter Thieves is gonna be really good. I think. Florida has really like I mean they've been having like a rough like week or two from when we last scrimmed them, but when we first started scrimming them, they were literally shitting on us. So um and I know they've been doing pretty decent in scrims, so they're like a underdog for sure. Florida? They who's, the best, who, who's the best team that you've played so far? Uh, is it an AM team? No, <laughs> no. Uh Dallas oh, wait, I forgot Dallas too. Dallas for sure. Best team we've played. Really, I mean, is. they gave us the most competition last year, too. And, I mean, they just grind a bunch. They're so ahead. And I don't know. What's they're the word jokes. you guys are saying? <laughs> oh, when you guys they're, are saying jokes. When you're like, <laughs> How far away from you guys do they live? <laughs> oh, 20, 30 minutes. But, dude, they did something. They are unkillable. <laughs> Nobody like, clicked that. <laughs> every other team will tell you, like, I'm a huge joke. Those guys are fucking jokes. Dude. Maybe they're just nasty. The funniest they, thing I mean, they ever, are, bro. But, like. I was watching <laughs> like, you guys scrim, bro, and literally you guys would be getting gunned by them, and then every time you'd be like, "It's Krim, fearless, fearlessly challenging, fearless." Like it's literally a call yeah. out to them, bro. It's like, "Yo, Illy mid, fearless," and you just start running the other way, Matt's bro. That's hilarious, bro. He's hilarious. <laughs> Dude, with Tyler, we were playing Kyler, we were playing checkmate, guys jumping out of the exit doors, jumping off wings, killing me, and I'm like, "Dude, screw this, I want to get off, bro." Dude, that's the crazy thing about like the meta in this game. Like, I feel like I get disrespectfully killed by Kriggs and 74 U's. Like, I don't even know what's OP, bro, because they're both can just do incredible shit. Like a Krig could absolutely gun a sub up close and a sub could absolutely gun a Krig from distance. That like, XM4 is really good up close too. I've been using that like all day, every day, cause that gun is just lit. But if you play against a good Krig, bro, you getting your shit smoked, dude. It's just, <laughs> it's just facts. It just has that little bit of kick, bro. And the Krig is just a laser beam. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, some of the like some of the ARs think it's kind of bad that the sub kills just as quick as the AR at range, which I can understand why. But like the Crick also doesn't move, and it's usually whoever sees each other first, like is gonna win the gunfight. Wait, and wait, if wait, AR wait. has, dude, the seventy four U is not OP. Is that what you're like kind of looting, that some people are you're uh, looting? Wait, you're saying a lot of a OP? lot of pros are saying it's OP. I'm not even lying. No, that's and, crazy. To think about, you, bro. Pros can't make up their mind. What is not OP? No, what is OP? You I, guys ban things, and then and now something else is OP. I like, get shit. where pros are coming from with most of the stuff. I just don't think that the seventy dude, the Krig is so good, bro. The Krig's so good, and I don't even think the like, like the, just shoot the meta right now is trick. good, right? Like the seventy four U. It is good. Big, that's why like it's fine. we don't want to change anything else. Seventy four U is not OP. The argument is, is like the people are using three subs on a lot more maps now. That's because they think it's OP, but you also just can't compete up with 74U with the Krig usually up close. But the Krig is a laser, and I don't know. People don't like that there hasn't been strafe on the ARs the last couple of years too, which but, uh, I can understand. What well, maps yeah, are people running I mean, three you... subs on though now? Like, but, like are they experimenting Gar with it now? The Garrison, Crossroads. Raid, Crossroads. Wait, they're running three subs on Raid. That's what it was in the past too. Then in Black Ops 2, people ran three subs on the map. Yeah. Yeah. But it was like a burst gun, so but like now this is an automatic weapon, so it's different. I feel like I, I thought know. it's just been like that the last couple of years too. No, I mean, people use the AN ninety four on raid and a M eight and then two MSMCs. It ended up being like on which up, on on raid. Yeah, people use a lot. A lot of people use an AN ninety four 
and uh, M8. But maybe, I, I, maybe they the, switched, the but second, it would be the three second subs for a lot game, of it. It was definitely three subs, though. But it, the Krig's automatic yeah. weapon that can kill up close, so I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Well, not different. I don't know, but I'm just not trying to get my <laughs> sub nerfed into the ground. Yeah, dude, I don't know. I don't think it's, like, super OP, but... You guys got rid of the damage barrel, bro. Let's just let it be, guys. If there's any... I think everything so far has made sense. Yeah. For yeah, the no. most part. I mean, people are going to be unha crazy. not happy either way, but... You can't make everyone happy, but yeah. you guys just got to do it. Competitively, it makes, it makes the most sense. I mean, I like for subs to be able to, like, hit really good shots from distance, you know? Like, if I get in a square up with you and you're Krig and you're missing bullets, I want, I want to be able to kill you. I want a sub to be able to kill that guy. I don't yeah. think that, yeah. that guy should just be I able to gun fair. you 10 out of 10 times. Like, I think that's whack, bro. Yeah, you don't want to have a pea shooter. Like, think about control, right? When you're the guy that has to make, like, a play. Like, imagine if your gun just literally cannot kill the AR no matter what. Like, in the lane, you have to win that one. Like, that's just lame to me. Yeah, like, there's sometimes where you have to ego chat, like, in a 1v1. Or, like, yeah. you know, you have to overextend for that kill. Like, I gotta like be able to at least I mean, take that gunfight. These guns are just... I don't want to say they're easier to shoot. The players are, one, on average, but now they're not recoiling at all. Like, the gun... Yeah, they like, I want to say recoil. the MSMC, even though it killed fast, like, from range, you had to actually have a, a gunny to hit those shots. Yeah, now exactly. I feel like people pick up these guns, and it's like, last year especially... People expected with subs to win mid to long range fights against ARs. Like, <laughs> it's just the guns shoot too well, straight. You're still going to lose that fight most of the time if the guy's shooting back, right? If he's ready for it. <laughs> I don't know. I There's mean, so many attacks also, and stuff nowadays, too. Like, yeah. you basically set yourself up to have no recoil with any gun. But you're also not like, <laughs> you're not winning that gunfight no matter what up close against a Krig, bro. Krig's be hitting some crazy shit. Jump, step back. You must have got, you must have got abused by a Krig today. because it's, <laughs> no, yeah. no, it's just, no, just like, from, just like, you could just, just play. The hit like, fire is pretty good on the Krig. The hit fire is pretty good, bro, and it kills super quick, dude. So, I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, they'll figure it out, bro. I like what you guys did so far. I don't think it's been, like, super out of hand, really. I feel like everybody's been sort of on the same page, at least. So far in GAs, have you? Has there yeah. been anything that's happened that you've disliked or no? Um, no, not really. I mean, I think like, I mean, the people, the AM said the AK gone before like we <laughs> even figured out that it was OP. All the pros thought the Krig was the best. Did the Groza get GA'd immediately? No, I don't think so. Somebody told me got GA today, and I was like, I want, like, I don't even. Is that thing OP? Like, I don't even use that. I think Maggie used it once or twice, but it was just like trolley. Oh, okay. Oh, I got you. <laughs> I don't know. DLC weapons have a have a past of being super OP off release, so mm. yeah, you know, some people are scared of. I mean, they do it on purpose, so mm. yeah. Well, I wonder uh, what this game would play like if it was if you guys allowed like I don't know DMRs, Augs, M16s, oh my and God, all bro, the barrels, just... And, like just just everything, just rogue. Imagine somebody just top playing with DMR. <laughs> me, 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 me. Oh my God, bro. Renetti's or Diamantes. I mean, sheesh. It would yeah, not please. be fun. <laughs> please, please, no. Yeah. Um, but before we go into Collins, is there any other topic you guys wanted to talk about or Envoy, anything you wanted to specifically hit on before we move into these? Uh, I think we hit a lot of them. Yeah, dude. Yeah, we did. Um, any uh, chat questions that can't make it to the Collins? We're about to jump into Collins, guys. So if you're in the chat and you had a question that you wanted to ask me, John, or, or Envoy, uh, you can exclamation point call in in the chat, and then our wonderful producer, Ben, will set you up to uh, join on in and, and come chat with us. Um, and I'm just really looking forward to this season. Same, man. I think it's shaped to be like a good, a good year, I think. I mean, the teams are really stacked this year. Um, the CDL... Learned a lot last year, format-wise, production-wise. I think Treyarch's probably helping a lot, too, on, like, the back-end side of trying to make it as, you know, good from the spectator point of view as possible. So, I'm think, really excited. I think we're set up for, like, the, big, the biggest year in COD history, right? Like, even it, yeah, especially if, like, some of the rumors come, like, come true where we have, like, a LAN event, you know, like, a, where everybody's, like, COVID safe and... People get to play on land. It'd just be so amazing. In a game that like makes sense, that's easy to digest, that you know seems to be like unanimously at its core, you know, liked by a lot of people. I think it'll be pretty dope. Like I think if they add a like a rank play, they take down SBMM a little bit. Normal pubs, like we have <laughs> such a good a good year ahead of us. It's a good base right now for the game, one hundred percent. One hundred percent. Like what they did during COVID to be able to make this game like this, uh, I think is remarkable. I, I mean. 
I've noticed I agree. all the pros are just visibly happier this year, like than last year's off season. You guys, well, not you in particular, but a lot of people like didn't even want to play MW in the off season last year. So people, people at the beginning of last year, I couldn't believe my eyes. There's teams that didn't scrim because they thought the whole spawn system was going to change, yeah. and that the whole yeah. game was going to change. And I'm like, no, it's not. Like the devs just took three years to make this. Like they're not just going to flip of a switch be able to change everything. Yeah. And I mean the people the ongoing every year is like the whole dead silence thing like whatever it comes out with like they're not probably going to change or you know it's it's like that for a reason for the most part <laughs> dan said don't say teams lag it was lag yeah like i don't know why you guys are scrimming this is all gonna change <laughs> yeah now if i get what you're saying though, there, there are people who didn't want to play the game though i think there are people want to play this game now yeah and people want to get on a scrim like it's enjoyable, enjoyable which is like really good we'll see like a, a higher level of competition and i thought last year's competition was pretty damn good um, I think so too. Uh, but uh, all right, let's bring the the first uh, call in in here. Uh, let's drag Ben down. Hello, Ben. Senor Ben. Oh, oh and he's gone. And he's gone. <laughs> Where's Ace? He's still playing, dude. He's still playing. Ace uh, is grinding. Welcome, Gersh. Uh, for those of you who don't know who Gersh is, he runs the Codcast Twitter. And I gotta say, dude, you've been leveling up lately, dude. You've been killing it on the uh, the Codcast Pod Twitter. Yes, sir. I appreciate that. I uh, I sent Paris an offer, but didn't get any word back. Uh, <laughs> looks like they still got their roster out, though, so <laughs> things are good there. They need something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, they really I'm do. Them, but no hate. Uh, Envoy, <laughs> always an honor to talk to you. Uh, my question today is actually from uh, the other Dill, Mad Cat. Um, yeah. DM me via the Codcast account, and he said, does Envoy think he'll be ready to be Scump's successor? As I personally think he'll be taking that role once Scump retires as the head man of COD. Whoa. That's Yo. a big, that's a big ask. question. Yeah, that yeah. is. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's definitely a big ask. I don't, I mean, I think as time goes on, I could fill his shoes on like a content side. I don't <laughs> think I'll ever be or anyone will ever come near as big as Seth. Maybe five, ten years down the line. But for the time being, I don't see anyone getting as big as him. But I'm trying to do all the right things. Um, everyone behind the scenes, Hector, even Seth, is pushing me to, you know, do big things in content. And obviously, competing is way before anything. Um, when it comes to it, like, you know, when the streams go off or when we need to turn streams off, like, I'm there to compete before the content. Um, and I'm there to win. So that's my, that's where my mindset but I mean, hopefully one day I can become something as big and as great as Seth. Um, but for now, I, I mean, I just want to win. You know, I want to win a chip. Uh, I want to win a world championship. So that answer goal. proves that he is ready. Yeah, <laughs> he already <laughs> he's been hey. trained for it. That was, that was a great answer. That was beautiful. Wow. I appreciate it. All right. Well, thanks, Gersh. Appreciate <laughs> you, brother. Appreciate you guys. Thanks for the question. Yeah, John, did you notice we're both wearing like white v necks right now, bro? Look at us, dude. Uh, yeah, it's on purpose. It's on purpose, bro. Ooh. With the beard. Is it flexing the gym ground? Crazy, dude. <laughs> oh, the gym ground, huh? Yeah. Oh, I wish. The place has been closed for months. <laughs> everything's open no. down here. Come through. Dude, everything's open. It's like COVID oh, yeah. doesn't Texas exist here. On... Yeah. I don't Can't care. get anything here. Wow. I, I don't know. I care. <laughs> All right. Bilka. Hey, what's up? What's up, man? How's it going? How are you guys doing? Good. So, um, my question for uh, Dill is, so, you know, it was, I was kind of, like, in shock when the Midnight Squad you had at the beginning of Black Ops 4 just mopped the floor with Optic. Um, and I just wanted to know if you think you guys stuck together, uh, would you guys have won an event? And do you think you'd be uh, where you are now or in a similar spot as all your other four teammates are now? So I don't think the way how everything went down, like there's no way I should have got here. Like if the midnight thing didn't fall through, I would have never been on Gen G. We probably would have never done as good as we did. And I probably would have never had the opportunity to join Optic or Huntsman at the time. Um, I, matter of fact, I, we probably could have done so bad. I probably could have got bounced out the league again and back to the AM scene. Ooh. But fortunately enough, I got to where I am, but I think if we went to Fort Worth with my Midnight team at the time, I think we were good enough to get top three, potentially win the event. I mean, that's probably high, like a high expectation, um, but I hold myself and that team to those standards. Um, I think our respawn game was just really good. 
where we could probably beat a bunch of the pros and when we showed that for the most part at the pro league qualifier or i mean the pro league yeah i just, I just remember yeah like i can't remember if it was like jet lee and he just like wiped like the op like half of optic gaming i was like who is this guy but <laughs> yeah yeah they had they had zuma too so we were <laughs> we were fortunate oh, yeah. that they didn't have brandon because we could have we could have started off the league pretty bad if uh if they came in hot yeah, right, thank well, you, Vilka. That team it, was man. definitely yeah. shocking. I wish we would have got to see more of that though. team. The way it ended yeah, just sure. seemed kind of lame, you know? It's tough. What exactly yeah. happened at the end of it? What? Their, their <laughs> org owner couldn't, like, support them or something, so they ended up having to, like, split nah, up. You lost not... your league spot, right? I don't know if I've anyone's ever came out and said this. My owner came to me and tried to get me to drop my whole roster. That yeah, was the problem. That's what I... <laughs> For base, base, He's told me he wants bigger names and people more social following, and I was not having it. And... Wait, wait. He wanted phase or whatever, basically. Oh, you guys... Nah, he wanted, he wanted like Haggy Saints, which he ended up getting. Well, that was the only way he was gonna pay <laughs> you guys, like, bro, right? Like, if you guys, yeah. if you did that, yeah. So yeah, and yeah, what an it idiot. was. Oh, oh, we're, we're back. We're back. <laughs> Happens every thirty. Are we minutes. good? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was too late, dude. I just got my Go XLR. Shout out to my girlfriend for Christmas. <laughs> And I couldn't click the button fast enough, bro. I'll get better, dude. I was not missed opportunity, <laughs> but it's all good. Those are scarce nowadays. I, I got one, too. Dude, I don't know Hopefully how she enough. got it, bro. It's been sold out. She's literally a wizard, bro. An absolute unit. That, um, that is a crazy decision by the org owner, though. Like, you guys were actually making a name for yourself. as You, like, <laughs> you guys were so good as a unit. Makes yeah. No sense. And I was like, he's coming to me trying to give me this, and I'm like... Bro, I'm not dropping my whole roster. Like, what do you mean? Yeah, dude. He's like, I'll, he's like, I'll pay you more money. You drop your whole roster. I'm like, bro, what? Like, we're literally six and one. We're probably <laughs> top three team in the league right now. Yeah, you guys are looking good, bro. It sucks we didn't get to see you guys in the in the tourney. Like, the way the league was going, I was like, these guys are the real deal. And then that shit happened. We were like, wow, that's crazy. But anyways, it worked out for you, bro. It couldn't have been any more perfect now looking where you're at now, dude. It's crazy. Bro, somehow the stars align. Like, I thought, <laughs> I literally thought we were all out of a league spot. Like, I was just trying my best to make sure everyone got like on a team. And at the time, like everyone did make it on like a team, like right after that one, but suck. Some of them couldn't stay around yeah. um, coming into the rest of the year. You went from potentially like driving a Honda to now driving a Porsche. <laughs> no disrespect to Honda, but I mean, a Porsche is just dope. You can look at it like that. Yeah. yeah it's cool. Man. Dope. You've made a lot of, a lot of progress. That's dope. <laughs> All right, let's bring the next uh, call in in here. <laughs> I realize I just kind of like hate guy, on Honda. You just, you and if just they ever want to shit on Honda, and if they ever want to sponsor the podcast, I'll definitely whip it. But I just like the course is dope. You know, it's cool. Uh, all right, let's get the the next one here. Oh, Jack, dude, what's up, man? Hey, how how's doing? it going? How's everyone doing? Doing great, dude. How are you? All right, not too bad. Just got off work. Um, nice. I just got a quick question more about the relationship between you guys and uh, Treyarch. So, kind of like with the state of the game. It is in now. Obviously, there can be improvements. There's, I mean, way more improvements this year than there was last year. But, you know, we still don't have necessarily ranked play or anything like that. But would you say, is there a positive uh, interaction and relationship between the teams and the players and the developer like Treyarch? Um, and do you think they're receptive to the player input that you guys are making now? Or has there just been um, maybe some barriers to player input especially with the changes you guys want to see or do you think it's on a good track um, or is there anything to do to make it better so i think we're on a good track i think with the cdl becoming like like an actual like league going from the cwl to the cdl the developers take it a lot more serious and it's different for all the developers i think treyarch does a better job than any of the other ones to try to listen to feedback and try to like Make sure competitive is where it needs to be to be very watchable and competitive. I don't know. Like, there's not too many OP things. There's not things that shouldn't be there. Um, and they'll work with us. You know, we'll come to a compromise at some point where with past developers, there's there's no compromise at all. Um, just to put in one thing is, like, last year, no tuning updates, no spawn updates at all. We've already had tuning updates and spawn updates this year. So already off to a better start. And then for ranked play... I mean, this is like a hot topic like every week, but it needs to be a staple. It needs to be there at the beginning of every year if we want to grow competitive. And I know it's a lot to ask, but they've made ranked play systems in the past. 
I don't care if you copy paste it. I'm sure it's not that easy, but it's it a needs lot to, to be ask? there. It's not a lot to ask. No, it's not. Well, honestly, I'm done with rank play. I'm done saying rank play. I'm yeah, done we said so much. talking about rank play. I'm saying that Activision needs to allow outside companies to run their own like rank S systems. Basically, how CS and stuff have faces. Yes, yeah. Have, yeah, rank S, FPL, so that they could just run it and then. It has nothing to do with the developer of the game. They run it. They're allowed to have servers. People like me and you and can yeah. get on and play rank S COD and actually like that's the reason why a lot of people don't play COD. Do that right now it's because they don't have a place. They, they yeah, get somewhere but to do it. This is a way where you just literally click a button that's what I'm and saying, there's yeah. no and you go and you just play a game. Like Brian Saint in the chat says, please. Like people love to play the game at a higher level. They just don't have a way. I would to do love it. to be able to get on, so queue up, and get in a game against Brian Saint and absolutely clap his cheeks. Like I would just yeah, love to do that. Everyone would. It would be and fantastic. Then you just queue up another game. Exactly, like, Brian. I agree. I would play say I would play COD all day if that was a thing. But uh, so why? That's why I don't play. Another COD. another plus is I won't have to play on twenty hertz if I did that. Yeah, they, yeah. We that, could that's have, another whole issue. Whole we issue. could have higher hertz servers. Like it'd be great. We say this every nah. episode, and Imagine you know, maybe twenty eight tick server. Wow. Maybe the maybe the dev at some point were like, watch the show, and just be like, yes, you know what? Name us John want this. Let's do it. But we say it every episode. <laughs> like every tier one esport has a rank play. All the games. All those games have a rank play. We're the only one that's like a top esport that doesn't have a ranked. Boom, bada, bing, period. It's not a lot to ask for, period. Um, <laughs> all right, thank you, uh, Jack, for stopping by the show, man. Appreciate it. Thank, thank, thank you for the thank question. You. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we are all very grateful for the game that we have and what the, like how great it is, but that's just one thing that like should be a non-negotiable for a big esport. Um, ben, you can bring the next uh, call in in here. Um. Yeah, Blizzard, what's up, dude? This is a regular right here. Welcome. Yo, what's how up? are you doing, brother? Uh, I'm good. <laughs> You're good. Oh, oh boy. It's it's I literally just checked Blizzard's user volume, and I have him on a 171 percent, and he's still quiet. <laughs> All right, bro. Blizzard, what's the question? Um. Yeah. So my question is for Envoy. All right, let's hear it. All right, so I just wanted to ask you, um, you know, you're always streaming COD. I just wanted to ask you, what's your favorite game besides COD, like video game? So besides COD right now, I actually like playing League, League of Legends. Um, I'm not too good at it. I'm actually pretty bad, and I don't play that often, but I get a couple of games every night. Um, besides that, CSGO was a big like a favorite of mine in the past so i grinded that like 2016 to 2018 um but not so much anymore i might have to get into valorant though Valorant looks cool played it for a bit it's just this that community was too toxic for me dude i played valorant for like a good month and a half i wasn't that good i know john's rubbing his forehead right now i was pretty cheeks but i, <laughs> I enjoyed the game and I had fun but dude like when you queue up in rank you're just getting fried like I oh, they're ruthless. It, they're ruthless. They're ruthless. Like, dude, and they're like, no, you are. I'm like, dude, get the fuck back on COD. You suck, brother. Like, they just be on you, dude. I'm just like, wow, man, I'm getting bullied. So I quit. You're also queuing alone. You can't queue any of those games alone. It's so toxic. Oh, my God. I'm not good enough to wear any of my friends. You're, you're, you're getting set up. With me in, in Valorant, yeah, you are. You know? All my <laughs> friends are good at Valorant, at Valorant. I wasn't. So I had to queue up. <laughs> I'm de ranking them, bro. But you're a border, so you'll probably love that game. <laughs> oh, dude, I, I'd, hop, I'd hop on i'd warm up on cs and then i'd get on for tournaments like yeah same dpi and everything jeez bro yo question for you so you know shout out to neo make it into phase this is so completely random but he was 100 percent boarding right like when you're playing against it like he had to have been boarding the whole time on cod did you did you guys know like all borders like know each other or not nah? i'm for the most part like you can tell so I he was boarding clips and i could tell it i don't i don't think so I don't know that. I didn't play him enough. I love Neo, bro. Shout out him, but he had to have been boarding. Bro. I don't know. Anyone in Black Ops Three who's hitting too too many snipes, they're boarding, bro. Neo <laughs> was Illy was Illy boarding in Black Ops Three? No. Nah, nah. Dude, you're not gonna convince me that can, Cell wasn't boarding. You can tell. Cell was like, boarding, dude. Who was boarding, watching, bro? That you know of back then, because you were obviously one. I don't of the think screens. anyone in the variant scene. I think I'm literally the only one. <laughs> No way, bro. Nah. There might have been people that have tried MC it. Doesn't but like, it is hard. It is hard to play a, like a console game with the keyboard and get like, there's literally, I kid you not, like 50 settings you have to go through just to make it feel smooth. Mm. You have to do like research and shit. Like, you can't just hop on and even if you're good at PC games, like make it look smooth on console. It literally took like 
It took me like a whole year to make it so I couldn't get caught. Do you think you'd be oh better God. with mouse and keyboard or uh, controller then? Controller for sure. Yeah, just because the movement. I think like... if mouse. Yeah, I think if mouse and keyboard players were allowed with controller players in the league, the controller players would still be like the best in the game. Just most mouse players don't have that like Call of Duty movement, like down to a T. No, I feel where you. with a controller you just hit someone with a slide cancel and they have no aim assist. Like it's gonna be hard. Or like a heady. No, I, I see where you're coming from for sure. No, that's yeah. Well, I if see you what you're a, saying, but unless over it's time, they would, they would definitely be better. Unless it's saying. like an S tier mouse keeper player, like super god, like if you hit them with some crazy movement, like two people coming at them, it is kind of hard to keep up with it. So I, I don't know. I mean, I, they wouldn't miss a snipe though, I'll tell you that. Yeah, snipers would be GA to me. <laughs> it might be like hardcore pro mod. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, let's get the oh, Blizzard. Was that it, by the way? <laughs> Blizzard. He told oh, me, bro. Me. No, no, I'm here. I'm here. Is that it? All right. Yeah, y'all have it. a good night. All right, thanks, Blizzard. You, you too, too Blizzard. Man. <laughs> All right, let's get the uh, the next uh, call in in here. What's going on, Xavier? You're muted. Uh, hello, testing, testing. Can y'all hear me? Yes, we can hey. hear you. How you doing? All right. How y'all doing today? Happy New Year, by the way. Happy New Year. Um, I just wanted to ask you guys, what do you guys think the best, uh, I want to say comp meta, the gun meta has been in, in the last couple of years? Last couple Obviously, because, you know, we have GAs and everything every year. So I just want to know, like, from you guys' opinion, like, what do you guys felt like was the best meta to play and to watch? Uh, from what game to what? Like, Black Ops 3 included? Uh... I'll say, I'll say, sure. yeah, starting with Black Ops 3. Black, yeah, Ops, then, Ops 3. Black Ops 3, <laughs> the last three months, meta was amazing. Interesting. Um, yeah, I, Black, I, I didn't play Black Ops 3 in a blowout. No. If you exclude that, then I would say the end meta in World War II. I could agree to that. Really? Once the bow got, like, like wasn't as or, OP. Bow. Or not the bow, the, uh, whatever the gun was. Like, the in World War II, the fucking automatic one. The bar? The bar, yeah. Bar. Once yeah, the bar they, like, wasn't they super god one barrel on it yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Once the bar wasn't like <laughs> super crazy, that, that meta was pretty good in World War II. I like the Black Ops 4 like three gun meta for the most part. I mean, I don't really have experience before Black Ops 4 or like all the Saga jetpack cops, crazy, but. Though, dude. That was I like the, the, the end of the two, game. That was one split. Yeah. Wait, what happened? Sorry. Um, idiot. Sorry, was that the end of your question? Yeah, that was that was just my question. That that was pretty much it. Because I was gonna say Black Ops Four is probably my my favorite meta to watch. The was so there good. There you go. Bro. And then at the end of the game, <laughs> hit skin. But, hit but skin. like there were just guns throughout the game that were just too, like crazy though. In all the metas though, like the Maddox was fucking crazy for a bit, and the Sog was the crazy. Sog was crazy for a bit. You know what I mean? Like the KN I, came in there too for if, a little bit. If it didn't have like a freaking god gun in every meta, then maybe I'd play yeah. that game. I just like games that there's no like just completely superior weapon. Yeah, I felt like that the in multiple points in that game, the games were being run by the people who were the best with whatever that yeah. OP weapon was. Yeah. <laughs> like seriously, that right? I yeah. Like the the, like the rampart, like, like, bro. That that oh, buff, everyone says it. First Yo, of all, that, buff, that that buff to the SOG for United at the time, like, like ridiculous. Their yeah. two best players just got the mega buff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and they had someone who could run a third sub like really well. Yeah, yeah. that's true. They were such a fast team. That's why you couldn't beat them on Freaker or CSUN. That's a good Mostly question. C-Sun. Uh, Xavier, thank you, dude. Appreciate that. I appreciate no it. Problem. Hope you have a good night, man. Yep. You too. Yep. Speaking yeah. of which, your two best players, nah, two or three, also got that buff. You Havoc at the time. Yeah. What yeah. happened to you guys? You guys got Damn. absolutely yeah. smoked. You got had, bro. Dude, you got had. had, had, had. had. <laughs> the day the groups got announced, I swear we didn't take it as serious as we should. Uh -huh. Like, it jams. That's groups. I, I, I said it to everyone. I said, like, we were not taking it as serious as possible. I don't oh, that's know. That's tough. You were down ooh, bad ooh. after that. Tell me huh? who. It can't be, can be Nagafin. It can't be. This nah. guy has. Yeah, Gary's got the passion. I, I, I'll call out Colt. <laughs> no, Scott Colt has had Colt. that for a bit. He has, he has a little bit of a havoc curse. He's become a really, really good player, though. Like, as time has went on, he's become really good. But, I you agree. know, I played with him at Champs. It was a little tough, man. He was playing tough. Madden, man, in between my boot camp. Well, he, um, 
I think for, before champs with me, he like got a girlfriend in like chalk cod. <laughs> And then he's just like every year he's progressively gotten better. So maybe, you know, this is the year he just flat out wins. He has gotten it. better, but he is the, you know, his champs placings are the worst ever. He's gotten he has, first rounded. He's gotten like, last, last in all of them. Yeah. They didn't last. win last year either. <laughs> yeah, I'm saying. But every year literally. his regular season gets better, but his champs remains the same, right? Like if you think from, uh, from uh, IW, trash, then, you know, the next year and the next year, the next year, like he's gotten better and better and better, right? So nah, he's not a bad player. His for champs sure. is just buns, bro. I don't know. Like, he's got. How are you gonna block. go into champs and play Madden though, dog? You guys are not. You guys were at the time. I would say you guys were in my like third place power rankings wise behind yeah. 100 Thieves and United. That's thing where is, I put, dude, uh, we got really like, bad boot camp practice. Like, where'd you guys? We're gonna laugh. Do? Where'd you go? People are gonna laugh at us. Oh, we went like the one week and we went like six and like 30 or some. Sh- Something in maps. No, I mean like where like did you one boot, day. what was the boot camp? The teams there. Sorry, I just wanted to get oh, that in there first. Uh I don't know. We did three boot camps. We did two or we did one at the optic facility, I think. Okay. I remember now. And then one or two in our Gen G facility. We did both those in because our Gen G facility is LA, so we did mm-hmm. that for champs and Anaheim. And then we boot camped for Miami in Texas. Mm. But I mean I we I like to say we are an event team, bro, because we really got harpooned on uh, online <laughs> and at the boot camps. I don't know, we couldn't figure it out. Dang, brother, you guys can't try and practice. We could, <laughs> nah, we we try, and we just get we get shit on. I'm telling you, we mm-hmm. clutched up in our searches though. That's what matters. Hey, yo, do you do you ever look back and feel bad like for space, bro? Yeah, it was bad when we did do them the second time. It was pretty or grimy, the, bro. The second, but time. like, ah, uh, it was so bad because like. Our system with Jared was just too good. Like it was, it was going to be more consistent. You guys were good and with I'll, Mikey, though. You like didn't lose twelve. We you won twelve searches in a row or something, right? Was that something or, crazy like that? Well, that was with them. That was before. before I got there. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah. but that week, that week he was with us. Yeah, we didn't drop a search either. Yeah. But like, I'm not like disrespecting Mike or anything. Like, I love Mikey, but our our like schedule that week was not that hard. Yeah, it was not that hard, but like. After we just felt like we were had a better shot and like it paid off because we, we got second the next event. I just had to bring it up, man. I, I'm, I wish my boy Space would get another opportunity by someone somewhere. We'll see if he's able to get back in at some point. But yo, Zach, what up, dude? What's up, man? What's the question, brother? All right, so this is uh, from the Rocker Community Manager. Uh, I'd love to hear the thoughts on the idea that the Rocker pulled the heist, taking essentially half the top two roster from last year, as well as an 18-year-old champ and attach and accuracy. Uh, would love to hear where you guys rank these guys. <laughs> right, Dylan, you what took a first. That's why you came in hot. Did you, what you, know, did you that? write that question yeah. down, bro? Yeah, I what do you guys think of Rocker and their new roster? Hey, first basically? of all, hold on, hold on. Repeat the story of your question. You said half of the top team last year, they didn't win yeah. champs. Pri- Priesta and I, I mean, said the top two team. Oh, right, well. they said top team. I was like, I didn't win champs. Top two. I, all right, well, can I answer this first? Because I'm just going to keep it up. Go ahead. This is the Rocker community manager trying to gas his team. I, I did get two players, and I do think Priest and, and Mike are really good players. So let me not talk shit about them. Really good players. Really, really good. Yeah. But... They did not get the better half of the team. By <laughs> <trying> to <laughs> <laughs> you guys did not. Uh, I'll I say mean, this. And then there's Lamar and Dylan. I think solid team. I, th- I was questionable about them at first, but we mm-hmm. played them and they're like probably some of our best practice. Their teamwork yeah, was really, really good. good. And like that's something they strive like to be good in. So it's no, uh, no surprise. I think Minnesota did a great job getting a team that will be like, uh, a solid team all season and a potential contender at a lot of tournaments. Because last year, your guys' team was obviously not going to reign championships. Like, it just wasn't going to happen. They had a lot of upset potential. But I think that, you know, they did a really good job rebuilding their team, getting some some really good players, and historically having a good placing. So I think Minnesota did a good job. I think they did, too, overall. Yeah. I wouldn't have gassed it like this guy did, though. But... He kind of did gas like we got half the top two team and we have two legendary. <laughs> it's like, I mean, if you think about it, all 12 teams have really good players, bro. Like it's four v four. Teams are stacked this year. Yeah. So, yeah. but Minnesota did a good job for the for the team that they had last year to come out with that roster. They're like 
Oh yeah. Completely move on from it for that. Like with this roster was really was a really good job. Yeah. To be honest. Yeah. Uh, and I, I think what Envoy said is what a lot of us expect from that team, right? Like uh, just really good teamwork, gonna be on point, staying current with the meta, always putting in a lot of time. Like that's sort of what I, when I look at that team on paper, I'm like, they're always gonna be on point. Like they're you're gonna have to be on point to beat them, right? Like they're not gonna make too many in-game yeah. mistakes, which is a good thing to have in a roster. But thanks, Zach, for the question. Let's get the next one in here. Dude, he came in hot, bro. For real. The <laughs> hot. <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> All right, Gus Reynolds. What's up, dude? How you doing? Yo, can you hear me? Yeah. All right, first of all, I just wanna say uh, nameless Pac-Man, Envoy, of all you guys. Huge fan. Appreciate it, man. Thank also, you, thank you too. For my, thanks for announcing my name on the stream too, by the way. Appreciate that. But also, no, nah, that's fine. Nah, um, so <laughs> I wanted to ask Envoy, so who, when you were coming up in COD, who was your biggest, like, uh, I guess like, you, you say an idol or like, who'd you grow up watching? Like, who'd you like grow up like, who kind of brought you, who you like where you are today? Like, who'd you want to be like? So... One end, I me, mean, like someone that's, I mean, obviously my teammate, Seth, biggest guy in the league, obviously he's done really yeah. well, past 10, 12, whatever years it is. But another like weird one is like in AW, when I was coming up and I was like 14, 15, uh, Kyler, Hook or whatever, yeah. he was killing it and he was on probably top three game, top three team in the game. So I kind of looked up to him towards like play style and how I wanted to play as a player. Um, yeah. Which is kind of like odd because he was like my age or whatever, but you know, I'd watch his gameplay, like how you know, I want to play like that, so play like that. So that's how I looked at early in my career. What's it like, like growing up, like watching someone like Scump, like just destroy and like Black Ops 2, and just like and now you're just his teammate? Like, what is that like, bro? Like, that's just crazy. I mean, I didn't watch him in Black Ops 2, he destroyed me in AW, so I'm happy I'm on that end of it this time yeah. for uh, these last two years, but I don't know. I was shitting on him yeah, in Black Ops 4, so like, oh, we oh, got dude, a good end of the deal too. So, <laughs> no, of course, bro, of course. I think that's crazy. Well, all right, that's thank you, guys. Thank you for the question. No, thanks, man. Appreciate the podcast, bro. I'm a long time follower. Thank you, man. Appreciate Take you. Take care, guys. Yep. Me too. All right, <laughs> let's get the next one here. I love those questions that are so like. It's obviously like a wholehearted question, you know, it comes from a really very heartfelt place. But it's funny, like mm -hmm. when they ask the question, they're gassing up somebody that like is like you consider like your equal kind of in COD. So it's just like, you're yeah. them. you know, it's like gassing them up while he's asking you it. So it's just it always puts you in a weird spot to answer. It's definitely just, weird answering that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but like I don't want to it's coming from like a real place. You know, you did grow up watching them, but maybe you don't think about it like that. So I, I definitely yeah. see where the question comes from. It's just funny. Uh, Trebs, is that how I pronounce it? No, uh, it's Teebs. Wait, what? Teebs. Oh, there's no, there's no R? R, brother. <laughs> the I'll, text is real I'll small. Good, I'll good. Uh, <laughs> what's your question, dude? Uh, first off, Dylan, you're a beast, a fair player, a couple of years, and I have a question. Um, you, man. Since you, since uh, you made the, you were in the AMC in World War II, and you made it to the top three team in Gen G in less than a year, and now being at Optic, what's the, what's like the moment that you feel you can grow to become the one of the best players in the league? Um, so we kind of talked a little bit about this earlier back in like AW when I got six, I knew I had what it took to like get back into the league or, you know, at least be a part of the league, whether that be on a top team or bottom team. Um, but last year when we made it, we got second on in Anaheim. I knew that like, this is like something more than I could have ever imagined. Um, because we got, you know, like you said, I went from the AM at the beginning of black ops four to second place at you know Anaheim, which was probably one of the, I mean not like money wise, but it's the biggest event like people attend every year. So I was like, this is like crazy how so much has changed over just a couple months, and I even even now like you have to step back and look at it like wow, like you know so grateful to be here. Like it's crazy how much stuff has changed. Well, I appreciate your answer, guys, and it's my first time on, so. Thank you for having me. Hey, hey thanks man. for calling in. Yeah, Come thanks. back for more, dude. Appreciate you, T. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We got like uh, four or five more people waiting, so let's let's get them on in here. Serge Waterboy. What a great name. Oh, Serge Serge the J-Dog. What's up, dude? Dude, I am vibing now. What's up? <laughs> oh, all right. There we go. 
Uh, what are you vibing out to? Some music? Uh, let's see. No, just you guys talking. Oh, okay. Love oh, that's that. what's up. Love that. What's the uh, question? Yeah. Uh, well, first, I just say, uh, on the way, I'm, I've been a super big fan of you for like the last like, two years. I was hoping that you would join Jumping Them before you join. Oh, well, your dreams came true then, huh? I, really see you, I see you supporting in the chat, though. I appreciate it, man. I got you. <laughs> uh, but my question is um, I know first from chemistry, like bad chemistry can like go back a team. Uh, chemistry been with Dashy, and like, uh, uh, did you ever have any like doubts about it? So I definitely don't have doubts about chemistry going into any team, really. Uh, my mindset is really just to how to make it work. You know, like we can, we're all grown men. You know, our, all our goal is to win. We just have to figure out a way to make it work and put like, whether that be our egos aside, like our personal opinions aside, like we have to do what it takes to be the best team. And I mean, people had, I mean, I think the doubts with Bruce was a little different than the doubts last year when we had Pierce on our team, but we still figured out a way to make it work for the most part. Um, obviously not in the end, like we ended up sw swapping rosters, but we still were like a top team in the game. Like you can't deny that. Um, but we didn't have all the pieces that we thought it took to be the best team. But going in every team, I won't like we're gonna make it work in some way or another um, to win. Absolutely. Sheesh, Hector sent these guys through media yeah, training. Great answer. Well, thank you, J Dog. <laughs> <laughs> thank funny, you for the question, for, my brother. For content days, they have uh, Hector has them sit down and answer interview questions. Yeah, prep us before we actually do the content. <laughs> yeah. Lit, lit. That's, that's what's up. All right, J Dog. Okay. I'm getting in. Right. Yeah, well, John, we don't you're... do any of that here. We just show up and we're just like, let's go. What's up? <laughs> Your face when he said that was so funny. <laughs> Oh, All right, uh, Serge Waterboy, what's up, dude? Hey, man, this is Serge Waterboy, most dedicated Waterboy in the CDL. Who? All right, who is this on, <laughs> on a rogue? Oh, you can look me up, bro. I'm the Serge Waterboy. All right, well, does Gersh do more voices? <laughs> is this real? <laughs> bro, I'm on Twitter. You can check me out. I'm gonna look you up. But uh, anyways, just what? What's your question, Serge Waterboy? All right, so so for the first question, um, this one's just for Dylan. Do you miss your? Not really, not really. <laughs> Joe's, 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 Joe's a good coach. Joe's a good coach, but Troy's got us locked down over here. I think Troy's the the best coach for this team. But I think Joey was a good coach at the time on Gen G, and That's I think a lot I of people a lot of people disrespect Joe. Because he hasn't I, I played as a that. coach, but or like he hasn't played as a player, but I think overall he's actually a really good coach and he understands Call of Duty very well. That PR training, man. Yeah, I, I agree with that. <laughs> I agree with that. <laughs> All right, okay. my second. Go ahead. Uh, I have a question. This is kind of for you know all three of you. Um, why don't more CDL teams have a water boy? Like, whenever we're scrimming and we're playing optic and I hydrate the boys mid map, they COVID. come back and smoke them. COVID, brother. Oh, I feel that. Yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah. Ain't passing it. Also, whatever water you were given, Surge, was not working, my brother. So I, I think that that's why. <laughs> For real. Did he just <laughs> join this year? <laughs> yeah. So, bro, uh, bro, it's all it's all good. We we got a better formula this year. Yeah. All right. I yeah. respect it. He worse. So I, I you're probably right. <laughs> <laughs> any uh? That was that filtered stuff. Any other final <laughs> final uh, questions, Water Boy? Um, no final questions, but uh, Dill, I love you, bro. I appreciate it. Thanks. Oh my god, that's the last thing I wanted to ask you before we, we wrap this up. Will we see Damon as like an analyst slash coach or something of Optic Man? Everybody wants to see it happen. He's so good at the game. You know, or really he needs just to be compete. Like, I don't know what he's doing. He should have. He should have seen the game before he quit, in my opinion. Man. Yeah, he definitely liked the game. He could have yeah. got a team this year, gave another run. Like, so, so basically, that means it's chalked, guys. I got. I, I fished for the info there. I got it. All right, it's it's not happening. Oh man, but yo, uh, it's kind of tough. I had to ask. He'll be there. He'll be back in somewhere or another. I had to ask. Well, all right. <laughs> um, this was lit, bro. I had a really good time uh, today. I appreciate you guys having me on.
Those are some good questions too. Yeah. The, the From uh, the Collins. Yeah, they came in hot to meet some funny ones, some good ones. Uh, and I hope you have a wonderful season, man. Uh, I think you got a great head on your shoulders, and I think you got a really good squad. Uh, keep doing what you're doing, bro. I'll be, be watching you all season long. Excited to see you guys. You guys grind, brother. I'm excited to get the season going as well. I'm sure you guys are too. Yep. But uh, yeah, thanks for having me on, and hey, time out you guys there. All right. Peace out, everyone. John, any last final yes, words? Yes, sir. No. Good luck to Optic Chicago. Is it Chicago Optic? Optic Chicago. Good luck Optic to Optic. Chicago. Don't. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck to Optic the next season. I mean, I hope you guys do really well. Great for the scene, and you seem like a really dope dude. Honestly, I think this is our first time sitting and talking like this. Yeah. So, I wish you the best of luck for real. This is. Thank you for coming on, and thank you guys in the chat for coming through. Of course, love you guys. And, and thanks for the good questions. And lastly, this podcast was fueled by XP Sports. Check them out. Uh, all of Dylan Envoy's stuff will be in the description below if you're on YouTube. And if you are on the podcast, you can check him out where? Twitter.com slash what? Uh, Envoy. Envoy. Peace, guys. There you Take go. It easy. Dang. Dylan Envoy.